got away with me. Somehow you got me to believe in everything that I could be. I've got to say, you really got away. You've got a way, it seems. You gave me faith to find my dreams. You'll never know just what that means. Can't you see? You've got a way with me. It's in the way you want me. Oh, it's in the way you hold me. The way you show me just what love's made of. It's in the way we made love. Lovely. Welcome, Mandy. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, man. Thank that was, you. That was that amazing. Was like, thank you very much. <laughs> no, thank you very much. That was absolutely great. <laughs> thank you. Uh, welcome to our little home here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, that was like, psh, okay, now the rest of the show no, is going to no, be now easy. Now you can be yourself. Everyone's <laughs> always nervous about that. But no, uh, thank you so much for opening up the show that way. It's great. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do something a little different than we normally do on the Construction Life. Uh, we've got a lot of interesting things that we want to talk about, but we're going to start off with uh, you came up with this idea, which was amazing. Uh, basically, what are you calling this? You want to call it uh, building or looking at a better 2023 kind of thing? Yeah, essentially how to manifest your dream life, your dream self. I like because it's the Construction Life podcast. I thought like a play on the words is sort of how to construct your best life and best self yeah. in 2023. I love it. Um, because of my background being as spiritual, let's say, as it is, I like to think of it as manifesting. So let me let everybody know who's here. So Mandy Ross is here. So you basically, you're a TV host, you're a media personality, you're a content creator, you're an entrepreneur, you're a life coach, you're a cheerleader, you're a spiritual positivity all kinds of stuff. The list doesn't end, which is great. And I definitely know that the construction industry needs this badly. I think it's been a very difficult year for many. I think we're going into a much more difficult year for many. And uh, I think it's important that we do discuss all this stuff. So it's really great that you're here and we're going to start talking about it. So this first show, because we are going to do a series of shows, we're going to just tackle next year and what to do. But we do have some other topics that we're going to tackle. And we'll let you know as we get towards the end of this show. And so I encourage everybody who's listening to Listen to the whole series at that point, because I definitely think it's going to help you personally, professionally, independently, because uh, we keep on forgetting about ourselves. We always try to please everybody else outside of ourselves. So we've got a lot to do. Your website is www.mandyjross.com. Your email is mandy at mandyjross.com. All over social media, uh, if you do a search for Mandy J. Ross or Mandy Ross, you will find you on any channel. Lots of stuff, and you engage with them, and lots of stuff to, to share with them. So yeah. where do you want to begin? I feel like there's so much we can unpack in this episode alone, and that's why I think it's cool that we're doing the series, because when you're talking about your life, there's so many different areas, right? Like, there's your work, there's relationships, there's health, there's purpose, there's all these things, right? I think it would be really cool, um, I, I just made a few notes for today's show, sure. but I feel like, you know, when we're talking about creating your dream life, you know, this kind of time of year, especially towards the end of the year, I think this is going to be airing before the new year. Yeah, yeah, we'll hopefully. get it out. Yeah. Um, but I think this kind of time of year, like, um, I just want to start off by saying, I think, you know, personally speaking, but also how I know, like, whether it's coaching clients or just people in general, it's this time of year where there's a lot of different emotions going on. It's a time for a lot of people of reflection, of looking back and either being really happy or maybe, um, you know, excited about what they accomplish. But for a lot of other people, they're kind of looking at it like sort of sad that maybe they didn't get to do what they wanted to do with this year yep. or they maybe missed out kind of that FOMO, whatever you want to call that. And I think it's important a to just like take a chill pill for a moment and just look back 
Because in my own experience, and it's funny, like we're having this exact show and partly why I was inspired to propose this as show number one, I think it can be really easy considering, you know, it's been a really tough year for so many people to kind of have this vibe around maybe not not accomplishing as much as you might have wanted to. But when you really look back and see maybe how much you've grown internally, you can really feel like you've actually had a successful year. And I say that only because like for myself, looking back this year, I could say there were years that maybe I did a lot more like traveling, yep. things that were kind of more ex outside of myself, external. Whereas this year, I didn't do maybe as much traveling, you know, things like that were sort of like so outside of me. But when I look back and see, I don't even recognize the woman I was at the beginning of the year internally. And I think about certain like, significant things that actually did end up manifesting or taking place this year and I'm like oh I see the seeds that are being planted and I have this like little I'm a writer as well but I have this quote that I said like for me I'm kind of looking at it like a metaphor like 2022 for me was planting seeds 2023 is going to be harvest time what was 2021 good question I I was thinking about that too it was almost like I would say I don't want to use the exact same thing. Like I don't want it to just be like it was another planting seeds. But I think for me, 2021, because it was the onset of let's not even go there. I but, don't want to go there. You know, know. Yes. No, but it was that I think it was kind of a radical honest year for me and coming to terms with a lot of things that maybe weren't working or serving me in my life. So maybe that was kind of the weeding. You know, even though that would normally come after, you know, the planting of seeds. But it was almost like, I think you have to do that, though. You have to, and we're going to get into that at one point in this episode. But it's like, you have to actually, yes, metaphorically, it doesn't make sense. But it really does start with you having to sort of assess everything in your life first to even make that that ground able to be fertile to plant those new positive seeds. Because if you have a ton of weeds already there and you're planting seeds on top of that, you're not addressing those weeds. Yeah. What are you going to grow? Right now, all the landscapers are like perking their ears. <laughs> right. I want to ask you, Mandy, um, what's really stopping people? It's one thing to sit down, reflect end of the year. This is what I achieved. This is what I didn't. This is what I want to but what's really stopping them from actually doing anything? So that's a bit of a loaded answer. If I could nutshell it, I'd say there's two kind of primary things that come top of mind. The number one across the board from all the work I've done over the years, all my own experiences, number one is yourself, but diving deeper into what is it within you, it's, it's all about your beliefs. Number one thing we have to have to make any change in our life is belief within ourselves, of ourselves and our abilities to, to create change. So I would say number one is your self-beliefs. What are the beliefs that you're holding in your head right now about yourself, about your world, about your circumstances? Because I can tell you right now, nothing outside of you is stopping you. As much as it might feel that way, yeah. there's mm -hmm. nothing outside of you that is the number one reason why you're not making progress in your life. And I think that sometimes we can get in these kind of ruts or, you know, if you're sitting there at the end of this year thinking I didn't do enough or, you know, well, poor me because this happened and that happened and this, this, we all can create a laundry list of, bear with me, tough love, but excuses yeah. for why we're not where we want to be. But there's only one person staring back at, in the mirror at you, right? But how is it, okay, because I know that, People in construction in general, they do love punch lists. Yes. They do love this um, pro-con kind of negative positive. And I think a lot of people from what I've gathered from speaking to so many people in the industry this past year and the past few years, um, their negative list is a lot longer than their positive lift, list. And they're, I think they're, they're truly forgetting the shorter list doesn't matter that it's fewer they're bigger accomplishments if you really dive deep into them. That's a, you nailed it. Right? You nailed it. And that's why I say it's a, it really becomes a journey of looking within. Because if I looked on paper compared to other years of my life, significantly, and it's funny we're having this conversation, but everything happens for a reason. Um, it's funny though, because other years of my life, 
on a, on if I listed things out, I would say on paper it might have seemed like I accomplished more. Yeah. On a list, if I wrote out, you know, oh, I I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this externally. But if I turn that to an internal, what did I accomplish? Like, what did I actually achieve building myself up inside? And I always say this. I actually said this to my mom the other day. The number one thing I've manifested in my life, oh, uh, trumping everything from money, opportunities, people, you name it. Number one thing I'm this, the happiest about manifesting is the highest self-concept, which is what takes me back to what's the number one reason why people don't accomplish what they want it's an inner game. Yeah. It's building yourself up. I mean, why do you even have this podcast? I mean, it's it's building yourself up. It's no different than building a house. Yeah. Where's the foundation at? Is there are there leaks? Are there cracks? Are there things going on in that foundation that need to be addressed in order to build properly? Cuz again, as I say with the whole weeding to planting seeds to harvesting, if the main ground is shaky, what are you going to build? But you're talking to a segment of the population that we are all a jack of all trades. Where yes. We're shoemakers. So all of a sudden when it comes to our own homes, our own personal lives, our, our own everything, um, we put it last. Yeah. We put everybody else in front. We put like there's amazing work that these tradespeople actually do. But then you go to their own homes and they're embarrassed to show their homes because they haven't completed what they wanted to truly complete. And they've gotten these ideas that have just taken so long and no time. And that's what's on the chopping block. And totally. you, you're constantly chopping blocking your personal potential. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a good segue into sort of how I figured today's episode could roll to actually give people like hands on legitimate tips on how how you can have that that most amazing best year yet for 2023. I'm going to say the main kind of theme around this is raising your standards, meaning raising your standards for yourself, raising your standards for your life, raising your standards for the people that are in your life. Like every area, you have to get to a point where you're like, I'm, as the saying, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm yeah. sick and tired of, of not meeting my potential. I'm sick and tired of not progressing. I'm sick and tired of feeling stagnant right and how do we do that it's first of all being aware like you need to be aware um generally it usually manifests in some way of some sort of external unhappiness i know you and i have chatted in our yep. conversations at times like it could show up externally maybe that looks like divorce maybe that looks like loss of money maybe that looks like your health your physical well-being is like going down it, it'll materialize it'll manifest in a way outside of you typically until it gets to a point where you're just so fed up with your circumstances that you're almost forced. You feel this force, but it's coming from within to make a drastic change. So how do you um, let your circle, whether it's family, business, friends, back off? Let me figure out my life. It's something that I've learned recently in a few years where it's like you just tell yourself how to fix yourself first yes right and so how do you do that to tell everybody else i know that we've had some guests on the show and they just basically have that moment where they've had enough it's been enough carrying on their shoulders and they just have to just blurt it out and just back off just back off i gotta focus on myself first once i figure that out then i can address all these other things but how do we do that so you're asking like how do we let those in our yeah, lives? Yeah, because know? we we are so especially a, a group in the in the construction industry, we just bottle it up. We yeah. just keep it in until it gets to a certain tipping point and all of a sudden then we release it. But a lot of people are still hanging on to it. Still yeah. hanging on to it and then they there's the masculinity. I'm just I'm just talking about the the male side of the yes. industry, right? Female side of the industry is, is going through the exact same thing as well too. Totally. But they're probably able to understand it and cope with it a lot better than the male side of things right yeah so the men they're just bottling it up and then they're just like okay how you doing i'm fine yeah i'm fine is not how you're doing that's no. not the question that's not the answer like how are you really doing absolutely so i would say i always am gonna take it back to 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 yourself right so i i truly believe and this has just been my own experience in life we determine how people treat us, and that includes how people show up for us in our lives. Everything is within your control at the end of the at the end of the day, whether we're talking spiritually with vibration, energy, whatever you want to call that, or even just mentally, 
how we show up or how we how we assume people to be usually is what is presented in front of us. You know, the saying like, what you seek is seeking you. That is really true. So when it comes to expressing yourself, I feel like there's a way to go about it where you don't have to be confrontational. You don't have to, you don't have to um, look at it like, like what, just putting it out there. What if you changed your perspective on it where the people who are in your life genuinely want to see you thrive or, or to be a success, those who love you genuinely and truly. So wouldn't it make sense that they would support you going on your own journey? Now, that's not always the case. No. I'm not, that's not always the case. But could there be a hint of truth in there where you're assuming that they have these expectations of you that maybe you're projecting yeah. that they don't actually expect of you because i think sometimes we can get into that mindset where it's like like you're saying say a very dominant masculine energy is like i'm the leader i can never show my emotions i have to be like the beyond end all rock for everybody but eventually if you like that's not sustainable you're going to crack at some point there has to be a healthy balance there so i might One thing I would say is, you know, for those who you do genuinely believe are are there for a genuine uh, love in your life, whether, you know, that could be um, the workforce, that could be your family and friends, your community, whoever those people are, is just having like really honest conversations, you know, like we're only human. (laughs) And even someone like myself, like even though I'm female, I would consider myself like one of the strongest people I know, but there was a point at, um, a few years back where I felt like, like just based on, on things that I went through growing up, I always felt like I had to be like this kind of, in some ways, like a perfect sort of like hold everything together and like always be that strong rock. I had to like make sure that I was always like good to go. Everyone could rely on me. And it came to a point, I'll never forget, I, it was when I was in LA, I did this hike one day. And I think just because of the physical exhaustion and also just I was feeling very emotional that day, I got to the top of the mountain and I'll never forget, I just started bawling. Like I just, it was like something... I don't know, unleashed or like kind of broke it. Like I had this sort of breakdown to break through. And this, the only thing that I could think of at the time was like, even rocks cry, even rocks cry. And I think if we can look at ourselves again, I bring it back to, you asked a question around like, how do we get those around us to sort of like give us that space? I think it starts with you. You have to create that. You have to create that vulnerability within yourself to go like, it's okay. Like I'm human. Maybe I was raised to think, think again, think that I need to be a certain way. When in reality, those who love and support me are going to jump on the bandwagon. If I say this is the new direction, this for is me. who you are. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know, I know that a lot of people will make lists this time of year yeah. and, and they want to achieve all these goals. And yes. Are we, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, where yeah. he actually asks you to do a daily routine and literally write out your whole day from the moment you wake up, what you do, for the moment you go to sleep and how you go to bed and everything like that. So then now you know your routine and just instill it in you, right? So we got people that are making these lists, 2023 is coming mm-hmm. and this is what I want to accomplish. This is what I want to achieve for my business. This is what I want to achieve for my family. This is what I want to achieve for me. Me is always last. Mm-hmm. should it really be first always always right always and i want to make a clear clear message today self-love is not selfish self-care is not selfish soul care is not selfish you're gonna upset certain people though in your in your network they're gonna think that you are being selfish yes but again i do believe that you are setting a precedent And it's funny you started with the time, the daily schedule. The number one thing on ways to raise your standards is to start with your time. Start with your time. It's like, it sounds like such a basic, simple thing. But as you said, how many of us, a lot of times are former, say, people pleasers or people who we tend to prioritize others in our life. That even, even energetically, but even just basic bare bones, like, lessons of life that I've, I've learned on my own, 
The moment you make someone else a priority, you then become become less. Yeah. You do. If you're not prioritizing yourself, how on earth do you expect everyone in your world to prioritize you or at least respect you and respect your time, respect your effort? Isn't it too easy, Mandy, though, that you'll, you'll try and then you'll fail? That's life. We're supposed to fail so then we can learn our lessons and then move on. Mm. But you get a lot of people who try, they fail, and they turn to vices. Yes. And the vices actually just compound the problems. And then you're thinking that they're quick fix fixes at that moment, but they're not. Yes. So, I mean, I, I personally have heard a lot of stories about people turning to alcoholism, drugs, yep. separation, and these are just more challenging times. So, I mean, I, I, for whatever reason, I have no idea. I'm not a life coach like you. I'm not a cheerleader and like that, but I have a platform and people have reached out to me and asked my opinion. Yeah. And I just say, listen, man, this, these are the two cents. This is what I've learned over the, my 51 years. This is what I've picked up. And, and some of it has worked. Most of it, it hasn't, right? But it's just you roll with it and you go with it. Yeah. But how does you get that person who is actually literally, for lack of a better statement, starting at rock bottom? And they're like going, I'm in my 30s. I'm in my 40s. I'm in my 50s. And I'm such a failure to me. This is what I'm thinking. Yeah. How do I start from rock bottom and start all over with the potential of positivity in 2023? Great question. And I, think I generally have a few on the show once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Great question to start with. Um, that's, I mean, there's so many things I want to say. Go on, say it. Yeah. Um, okay. Number one is you have to get your mind right. And the most important thing, I, and I'll say this, like this is even partly why I do what I do, what, what my world mission is, is, I really believe in those first seven years, yes, I'm going to go into inner child stuff, but it's because it's so significant. I truly believe the number one thing, as I said, that's the most important thing as the greatest asset we can have is our belief in ourself. If, if you're at a rock bottom in your life, chances are you have gone through a lot of things and have taken on certain mindsets around what you're worthy of certain mindsets around your self-worth, your whether you're enough or not, like those kind of stories are probably, they've been on repeat for a long time. So I always suggest something even simple to start is to do somewhat of an inventory of your life. If you're at rock bottom, chances are most areas of your life are probably not working in your favor right now. If you're feeling really lost and alone and like you're just at the lowest of lows, it's really important for you to double down on like some very basic healthy habits and also do an inventory of your entire life and look at each area and go, hey, for example, with relationships, are these relationships serving me or are they maybe not the healthiest for me? Even before we do the inventory, you have to be radically honest with yourself about where you're at. If you can't be honest, like you said, it's putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. Yeah. You're not going to get very far. You might get, you know, you might make a little bit of headway, but who are you fooling? You're not fooling anyone outside of yourself. You're fooling yourself. So how does one be honest with themselves? How do you confront that person in the mirror? How do you just finally tell them? We all wake up every morning and look at each other. Let you look at each other. Look, mirror at, work. look at everybody mirror in the mirror. Mirror work is a huge one, actually. Now that is you said it? it? But mirror yeah. work, I think that mirror, like one of the things that I've adopted in the last little while in my life that's made a huge significant difference is actually really intense. Because I've given the, these exercises to coaching clients as well. But actually intentionally looking at yourself in the mirror. You only have to face you. A lot of times, we, you know, when you're a little bit more, let's say, in tune with yourself, you realize, like, you get to a point where you're so sick and tired of your own, for lack of a better BS, yeah. that you just get to a point where you're like, hey, I'm, I'm, not, what, I'm not where I want to be. I'm not doing what I want to do. I'm not anywhere near, like, I keep making these goals. You kind of just get sick of, of having the, the Groundhog's Day go over and over and over and over and not making headway. The only one you can point that finger on is yourself. Yes. And I think that in my experience and from everyone I've talked to, whether it's working with people or just people I know in general who I love and care about, we have these kind of conscious conversations. I think you just get to a point in your own journey of evolution where you're like, okay, something like I'm, I'm continuing to see this pattern over and over and over. 
like, how do I change this? Because I, I think you have to get to a point where you also don't go into victim. Like you have, you can't be a victim. You have to take full ownership for your life and go like, Hey, I can try and blame shame, guilt, tri- whatever, everybody outside of me. But at the end of the day, like they're living their lives, Yeah, you know, like I'm the one that's not progressing. So it takes radical honesty. It takes ownership to go like, Hey, I need to make a change. I'm not happy. How do you find out if you're not happy? Again, chances are if you're at rock bottom, you probably are physically not feeling your best. You're probably not looking your best. You're probably not having the healthiest relationships. You probably are potentially even partaking in things like addictions or, or trying to numb yourself of something. How does that journey start? It starts with honestly inner conversations. You have to be able to like talk to yourself within. The only reason why I've gotten myself to certain levels of achievement in my life is because I have such a strong relationship with myself to begin with. I talk to myself all the time. And like, I'm not literally meaning like, I don't talk to myself no, in the no, mirror I know what you mean. but it's just like, who are you with at the end of the day when your head hits the pillow? Yeah, I, even, even, even if you have a significant other, who do you end up with at the end and beginning of each day? Yourself, you're in here with you. What you tell yourself on a repeat day in and day out, day in and day out, is what is going to start showing up in your reality. If you have a really low self-concept, you're going to start seeing these same patterns show up over and over and over again until you go, hey, I'm breaking this pattern. I'm breaking these stories I keep telling myself that I'm either not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not worthy, I'm not fill in the blank. But I think you have to get, a lot of times we have to get to a rock bottom that I would invite anyone listening today, if you feel like you're at a rock bottom, hallelujah, that's a blessing. That's probably the biggest blessing you yeah. need as a hit in the face. Like, no, not, I'm not, not, no, no, but I agree literally just a sure. slap in the face to go like, whoa, like clearly something's not working for me in my life. It's a lot easier. And I, I say this about relationships too. There's always exceptions to every rule, but a lot of times it is a lot easier to take drastic action, to make a significant change when you're dealing with sort of a worst case scenario than it is if you're kind of just getting by. Because getting by, you just kind of keep going through the motions, right? Same with relationships. A lot of times it's actually easier, not not easier in the sense that like it's it's a better scenario by any means, but it can be easier if you're like having the worst relationship ever and there's like a ton of, toxic stuff going on to go like, Hey, this is definitely not healthy for me. I need to remove myself versus you're kind of in a mediocre relationship. It's just kind of going through the motion. You're settling, but you don't make any, you're used to it. Yeah. It just becomes so familiar and comfortable. You're like, nah, I'll just stay. That's that to me is this like, I, I would say I'm like one of the most fearless people I know. But I'd say one of my biggest kind of like motivators in life, I never, ever, ever want to feel like I'm living mediocre life, ever. I want magic. You've been there before. I've been in that stage where I've done the repeat on and on. And as someone who like, I mean, I, ever since I was very young, I've always been so passionate about progression and growing like for me you know, like they say like certain things equal death to people for me if I'm not learning and growing every day you might as well kill me like I have to be progressing every day it doesn't have to look like active progression like I don't have to literally be do 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 it could be internally yeah. progressing but I have to be growing or feeling like I'm evolving every day in order f- to keep going right so yes I've experienced those those situations But that's why I say, if someone's at rock bottom, if you're at rock bottom right now, this is a blessing. This is a calling that you need to be doing more with yourself. And you can. I want to ask you, Mandy, um, what about external forces? So, I mean, as much as our family probably wants to be supportive, our friends want to be supportive, uh, out people on social media want to be supportive. I mean, we're all connected to the dopamine 
high that we get from people that are strangers liking what we have to say there is that small percentage of people that want to see you fail that want to talk crap about you and that includes in your family in your family oh sorry in your family in your friends and in your co-workers and online how do we get those external forces out of us and blocked so my initial reaction the way i've trained my mind anymore is how do i hmm. I like to look at the world, and this is not Pollyanna, but I do like to view the world as if everyone is in your favor. Like everything's working in your favor. Everyone does support you. Yes, you will experience people at times who are showing you the opposite, let's call it, of your ideal of, of that support. You have to just get to a level where you go, I don't give a you know what. Yeah. You really do. Because you're in this journey to evolve and progress the better state you're in, chances are the better you're going to make your inner world and your outer world. So if you think of it with this tunnel vision somewhat like that, as much as I know, especially when, like I've had situations in my life where whilst I'm going through highly transformational times or transitional times of like radical growth, you are going to get to a point where some people won't understand or you're going to outgrow certain people. Some people might... I think everything boils down to fear and love. And I, I, I will go back to this, but the reason why I mentioned those two emotions are like kind of the strongest emotions. We, everything kind of boils back to those two, boils down to those two, is because there will be people who are drastically afraid of you changing because it scares them. Yeah. It's not you. Your growth, your change scares them because it's unfamiliar to them. And it could be a case of, they're afraid of how it's going to affect your dynamic or maybe they're afraid to level up themselves. But the most important thing is for you to remain focused on you and that goes back to prioritizing yourself. You have to decide no matter what, you are going to prioritize your well-being. That has to be number one. It has to be. I, I, th maybe the caveat I would say, but again, I think that we determine how people treat us. I'm not a parent yet myself. I would say, you know, when you become a parent, hopefully that little being is a priority, like the biggest priority in your life. But you still, as a parent, even need to be the priority. If you're not taking care of yourself, how are you going to be taking care of those babies? Like, it, no matter what scenario we're talking about, you probably, if you're, you know, in the construction industry or any industry for that matter, and just being a part of a family, like you're going to have people who rely on you most likely, Right. Think of it like this. In order for you to show up as the, the strongest leader, you need to, to be able to be the strongest within first. And if you're not prioritizing making yourself into that strong leader, you're not going to be able to lead in the best, highest way that will actually be better for those people. So you have to kind of think of it like you have to, in a sense, train your brain to start seeing it as like, not only am I investing in myself to become the best version of me, it really is going to trickle down and be a best investment for everybody in my inner and outer worlds. I want to ask you about what about the preachers? And when I say the preachers, I mean, fine, you're the individual, you're working on your life, things are getting better. And all of a sudden, some, for weird reason, you start being this preacher to everybody else around you trying to tell them, yeah, this is working, you should do it too. Yeah. Uh, basically an ultimatum to them. So now you're preaching. And it, I mean, that's, is it a positive? Is it a negative? I ask the one question amongst everything when I'm dealing with anyone in my life, and that is, what is the intention? If you have a positive intention, I think you can approach it in a way that it doesn't have to be preachy. You can offer advice without it coming across as, you know, being hostile or aggressive. I like to sort of open up conversations, but at the end of the day, people can only meet you where they're at. So you can invite those kind of things to start happening in your dialogue with others. But if they're not ready or they're not willing to be open to that, I think it's actually a waste of your time. Yeah. You know, like why would you, why would you 
put so much energy and try like to try to convince anybody when you know the saying like when the when the student's ready the teacher appears very very likely you will be a teacher for many people in your life especially if like you're a leader in your industry or you know you're a parent or a significant other at home or whatever like you will more than likely just based on your own transformation journey become the teacher by doing and being versus saying and speaking it yeah so I'm a huge firm believer that we learn by examples, right? So it, it, and I think that's something even for myself, not necessarily trying to teach everyone, but I think that when I was younger, I was always trying to share and give, 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 give. And I realized like I was putting out and that, you know, that, that stems from like old beliefs of myself in, in my own worth of, of giving, 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 and not being as much of a receiver earlier in my life. And it's like, when you get to a point where you're really, um, you're pretty sure about yourself and sort of what journey you're on and, and working on becoming the best version of you, you're, you're sort of hyper aware of people who come at you or come to you wanting actual genuine advice. And you don't feel the need to constantly externalize your lessons, externalize what you're learning. It's like you're just, you're kind of healthy in your way of being. And those people who are, are catching on, who are seeing your progress, they're naturally now coming towards you. You don't have to like become that person. You don't really want to become that person. I don't, I think it, it, it's a kind of mix of, when you're constantly feeling like you have to be that preacher, I think at some degree there's probably a level within yourself where you're seeking like external validation at, to some degree. Yep. And you don't need, like if, if you're living it and you're feeling like really good about yourself, if you're in a healthy state, you probably won't even care to expend so much energy trying to prove it or preach about it to others. You're going to just be it. And those people are going to start coming towards you who also want to join you on that bandwagon. I mean, it wasn't until my 40s, I would say my early 40s, that I started, I don't give a shit about telling anybody about what's going on. Yeah. I just, I either figured out how to do it and I just did it. And then yeah. when it was done, you're like, oh, so you pulled that off. That's great. So, but I know that in today's digital age, everyone is looking for that validation, like you mentioned, yeah. that they want to share it to get that kind of kick on pat on the back. Yeah. That people are like saying, good for you, good for you. But there is that small percentage of people that want to see you fail. They just, that's just human nature. Me personally, I would love to live on a planet of just animals because they never want to see you fail. What if you got to it? What if we got you to it? state of state of mind where you just thought you know what everyone is actually in support of me and when that stuff happens because mm -hmm. it's it still comes up of course but i i can i can genuinely say and i and i'm not going to counter what you're saying but in my experience i feel like it's so rare for me to have any sort of adverse thing come at me anymore and I'm convinced that it's because of the way I literally, like, I, I would never say that statement. I would never say there's always going to be someone who hates on me. I never say those kind of things to myself anymore. But you I don't believe that they exist? I like to, f I like to, to literally saturate my mind with my ideal scenarios. And... It might sound radical, it might sound delusional, but I kid you not, in my current state of being, those kind of little adversities pop up so infrequently now that I am convinced that it has to do with my view on what I, how I see the world and the world at large, that I'm attracting sort of that kind of stuff back to me. And I'll give you a simple example. If I, if I did walk around and say like the world is against me, bad things always happen to me. People hate me. Blah, blah. Like when you, when, when you dominantly think in that way, I can guarantee based on client work, my own, my own experiences, when you're thinking like that and you're looking for that stuff to happen, essentially it's coming, you're coming, it's yeah. coming for you. Yeah. Like, and I, again, I'm not, no, I, I I'm not saying you. this I, is easy. I, I I'm totally not saying agree. this is an easy thing to do. I'm saying, what if, and I, I'll, I'll put these kind of things out on my social. What if you entertained the thought that everything is working in your favor? What if you entertained the thought that there's only going to be the best case scenario? Like we have 
so many people out there going, no, you should, you should. Plan B. Yeah, why isn't there a plan B? What if, think about the worst case scenario. Like, you know, I'm going to be real with you. That's all I can be on this podcast. I think that in life, especially when we're younger, we're so, we're like a sponge. We learn everything around us. And I've said this on other podcasts too. You know, when I have children one day, and I, I actually had an interesting conversation with my mom about this, but I said, I will actually say to my own children, to a certain degree, don't even trust what I say to you. Mm-hmm. Because you have to, we're so impressionable at that age. And then the more we grow into our adulthood, I feel like there's so many of these quote unquote truths that are put on us that are not actually truths. They're just things that we were told and they turn into beliefs because there's no one else really saying they're not true. But I challenge you out there, again, whether you're at rock bottom or not, but if there's anything you wanna change in your life, it starts by asking yourself, okay, what are my beliefs around this thing? And even what you're talking about with your, say your support system, am I actually believing that these people are supportive of me? Because deep down inside, you might have a belief in there that says something along the lines of, no, people are not supportive of me. I'm not worthy of changing. The people around me are gonna hate on me. Like everything that you're seeing in your world, as much as this is a shot of truth juice, but I had to get to this point of taking full responsibility and ownership of my life for every success and every, I don't, I don't like the word failure because I don't think anything's a failure. I think it's just a lesson learned mm-hmm. or a success. I had to look at everything across the board and go, I created this for myself. I did. I really created each and everything that has happened in my life. I think there is a caveat. When we're younger, there are certain times and things that happen to us that, you know, we're out of our reach. But those are the things that shape us. And one of the biggest things I've come to realize, whether it's coaching or my own experiences or, you know, talking to other people, and I think it's a huge thing to have to mention because this has everything to do with raising your own standards for yourself even though when I'm speaking to those out there, especially who might have been, you know, traumatized in their life, even though you were victimized completely, doesn't mean you have to be a victim. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. That is such a big, like, that's a lot to unpack for a lot of people. And if you're hitting rock bottom, more than likely from my experience and just seeing people in my life and having a compassionate heart, more than likely you probably hit rock bottom earlier in your life at some point. And it's a pattern that is now coming back. Until you in, in, address it internally, it's not gonna go away. Is there a little bit of truth, Mandy, or probably a lot of truth uh, regarding the, the person that you are today as an adult Yeah, was already predetermined because of how you were as a child? or how you were raised, the experiences as a child? Yeah, I would say, okay, this is my notion on (laughs) how we become the way we become, because that's a huge part of it, right? Like, so little Jimmy, let's say, or little Sally, whatever you want to call that, when you're born, this is my, my two cents, and this, whether you're spiritually based and really into manifesting, you know, your, your highest version self in an energetic way, or science based, and you just believe, you know, at the end of the day, we're all energy beings, right? I do believe, and this is, again, it's not a Pollyanna view because I've been through a lot in my own life, but this is just the the beliefs that are serving me today in my own life. And this is why I share them because if something's worked well for me, I want to share it with y'all watching. My belief is this. I do believe we were all born perfectly. And what happens is over time, especially those significant first seven years of our life when we're the most impressionable, but I think what happens is through time, we go through, I'll say experiences, because it's not just trauma. It doesn't have to be negative things. But we'll say it, we go through so many things that end up shaping us that over time we keep put, putting on these layer upon yeah. layer upon layer upon layer. And it isn't until something usually happens or we just come into a like a spiritual awakening, we'll call it, that we realize, wow, I've allowed like so much of this stuff to bog me down that I don't even feel like my true self anymore. And you go, and this is like how I've I've come to process and my thoughts on what like 
actually a true evolution of yourself is, is when you can get back to that inner child state of being. My biggest goal right now in life is to be able to get back to a space mentally, even physically, that is the most like that inner child. Yeah. Really. I think a lot of people, as they get older, that's what they look forward to. Really. Trying to rediscover that inner child. It, it's so true. And what, what, so you have to then question, like, where's the disconnect? Because I started that way. Life. I'm. That, people that you've met, people that you have let into your life. People exactly. that have shaped your life and decisions that were yes. made. I mean, I would love to just go right back to my 20s when I was just a huge person practical joker and doing all kinds of stuff because i was happy i was doing certain things i was still fulfilling and i was still career driven yes. i was still doing all this stuff but i had no worry about this is not a good idea i always had a, a, an interesting perspective on it that this is a great idea that this yeah. is going to turn out great and whether it was like you said not necessarily a failure it was a lesson learned at that point but you still experienced something yes now today most of us are reacting to yes. what we're constantly doing in the here and now. Very what reactive. We live year? in a very, re I'm going to, I'm just going to go into, I, I would like to pose a question to you. Sure. Cause I have my own two thoughts about this, but or two cents, but I want to know from you, what do you think shaped you the most or changed you the most that got you away from that youthful, optimistic carefree you in your 20s and like more so than just saying life like is there something in particular that if i had to ask you maybe dial it back what beliefs maybe do you feel like maybe could have shaped taking you away from that kind of state of mind i think the first thing that i'm thinking about is society's expectations of us yeah like everybody in their 20s at my generation, 20s and 30s, were already trying to justify getting married, whether to the right or wrong person. Yeah. Having child, whether with the right or wrong yeah. person. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, a career choice. Yeah. These society kind of obligations yeah. were pressed upon you. And you kind of just either accepted or didn't accept it. And then me in my 30s and 40s, I started saying, no, I want none of that. That doesn't apply to my happiness or where I want to potentially go. But the unfortunate thing is I didn't have a clear path of where I wanted to go. Yes. That's what was missing. So I could have been objective towards this stuff, but I should have had the other fork of the road, the other side. Yeah. Right. So that's what I th I'm looking at it. Like when I look back now, because I can look back at it now. Yeah. Right. So that's how, that's how I look at it. Yeah. I mean, that's you nailed one of the top things is like, it's so funny that we're trying to impress, impress that word itself. We're trying to impress people outside of ourselves yeah. when the impression came from external. Yes. At the same time, and you realize none of those people's opinions matter matter at all. None of it. At all. And I'm again, a lot of the things I'm going to say in this episode, I'm not saying that they're going to be easy. I'm not saying they're hard either, but I'm not saying they're easy, but they're very simple concepts. It's like some basic, simple questions like, what do you want? Have you asked yourself that? And what do you want? And even more importantly, have you answered that? That's what I'm saying. You may have asked it over and over. You may wake up. You may go into your car, truck, work van, get on the job site and ask yourself all that time. End of the day, end of the week, end of the year, you haven't answered it. What do I want? Like that, start your life with what do you want? And then, then work on getting what you want. What do you want? Who am I is another big one. Who am I? I want to, sorry, sorry. I, I want to ask you about how we stop ourselves from quitting. Oh, okay. And Could then it, I, and then I yeah. want to ask you, as we get closer to wrapping up, uh, and then I want to ask you, what are the key things that we can do for 2023? Yeah, I have like, I have some, um, some ways to, to up the up level, yeah. next level your standards. So what, what, how do we stop ourselves from quitting? It's easy to tell ourselves in the mirror, make that list. It's easy to do all this crap. It's hard to actually do this crap. I'm going to go, you know, normally sort of the cookie cutter answer is like, you know, you just, you just do, but I don't think that really gives people the context because that's easy to say, right? Yes. 
you, again, I think you have to, and I'm not saying you have to hit rock bottom for this. You, what you do need to do though, you need to consciously decide that you're worthy of better. You have to literally decide. It's as simple as that. I kid you not, any time in my life, it took actually, it, it, it all starts from within. And the only reason I say that is because I've seen it work in my own life. I, I wouldn't be so passionate about saying that if I didn't realize the power of convincing yourself. When you convince yourself you're worthy of better, of you're worthy of more, things will start to shift radically, radically. Because I do believe that there is this higher power that does exist, whatever it is you believe in, it it's honestly doesn't even matter. As long as you know that things in life, even if you feel like the world since you were conceived has always been against you, I kid you not, it's not. It's not. But you have to convince yourself first that it's not. Because if you keep telling yourself that story, things are not going to work out for you. If you keep telling yourself that story that you're not worthy of winning or succeeding, if you keep telling yourself that I'm a victim and I can't accomplish anything, you could have a million resources. You could have a million people try to help you. You could have all the opportunities in the world, but you're not going to succeed because you don't believe that for yourself first and foremost. That mm -hmm. is the number one thing I think that determines people who are a success to non-success. And I'll always go back to the same example. There are people that have like honestly the most heartbreaking beginnings to their life but they decide they go I don't care who raised me I don't care what circumstances I started with my history is not going to determine my destiny and they make something of themselves not for anybody else either they do it for themselves to be proud of themselves they're not looking for that external validation a lot of people actually have the most respect for those people and they don't even care because they decided for themselves, I'm going to be better than where I came from. I agree. All right. So tell us a little bit about what we can do for 2023. Some of the key things that we can focus on. Okay. So this is coming from the life cheerleader herself. <laughs> Go shoot. Okay. I think there are a number of ways that you can raise your standards for 2023. And I, I like to think of it like that because, again, it's like it doesn't take – like people sometimes think that it has to take so much effort, which I think like shoots them in the foot even before they start. Yeah. But it's it's it really starts with this hyper awareness of these different areas of your life. So one thing we touched on is um, your time, mm -hmm. raising your standards for your time. What does that look like? Well, do an inventory. If you have certain goals you want to accomplish and you look at your daily schedule, first and foremost, are these habits and activities supporting yes. in some way point a to point b if not you need to make some changes does that have to look like drastic anything no in fact i wouldn't suggest unless you are literally like hardcore maybe like me or like like insanely like hardcore for most people no this isn't the way to do it it's baby steps and over time Baby steps that are taken daily are going to lead to those big leaps you want to see. So let's say, for example, very basic, simple. A lot of people want to get into better physical shape, right? Better health for the new year. Do you have to go and redo your entire diet, join every class out there, go to the gym? So, no, you're no. going to set yourself up for, like, you, you haven't been doing that. No. You've been doing that maybe forever or maybe, like, for years or whatnot. That's not the way to do it. It's gradual, right? And think of it like this. I Another reason why I feel like people quit is because they don't see like overnight success, but it didn't take you overnight to get there. It's not going to take you overnight to like build you into what you want to be, yep. but I can guarantee the only way you're going to fail though is if you quit. You have to remind yourself. Again, that's why like one of the favorite exercise I do. And I, I mean, this might sound hilarious. I don't care if y'all do it, like go in private and do it in your bathroom mirror if you need to. I'm not going to take full credit for this. This is um, in part an exercise I heard from Mel Robbins. If, okay. if people out there listening are familiar, she's amazing um, in, in some of her concepts. Every morning, I'll, I'll share this with you. Every morning I wake up 
And when, like I say, my prayers of gratitude. I'm really grateful for each day. I have a master morning routine. Highly suggest y'all. I've had one since my late teens. Morning routines are amazing. But one of the most simple things I do, I literally have a sticky note. It's like in the shape of a heart. And I have it right on one of the mirrors in my house. And it says, Dear Mandy. And I read this to myself every morning. It says, Dear Mandy, I love you. You are worthy of being celebrated just for being you. I'm going to repeat that. Dear Mandy, I love you. Fill in the blank with your name. Dear so-and-so, I love you. How much of a, like, how many, when was the last, have you ever said to yourself in the mirror, I love you. You are worthy of being celebrated just the way you are. Not the you that's like skinnier, richer, better, blah, blah, blah. No, you're worthy of being celebrated and you can fill in the blank there, appreciated, valued, acknowledged, you know, whatever. You're worthy today in the shape you're in today. You're already worthy of being lovable. But isn't it funny that most of us actually tell ourselves in our head, we don't say it out loud, maybe sometimes we do, the complete opposite. Here's where I, I'm going to finish. This is why this next part is so powerful. So I say that to myself. Do you know the ending of that? I'm going to share with you because this is really powerful work. As funny as it sounds, once you do it, then tell me how you feel about it. The end of that sticky note says, high five. I literally give myself a high five. Like I stand back from the mirror. I'm like, you go, girl. You go, girl. Something about high fives in society, it's been determined. And this is what Mel Robbins kind of focused her thing around this high five notion it's been studied among sports teams, among work teams, among all these different, even in tribes and things in the world. Something about a high five, when a child especially is given a high five, they perform or outperform themselves to such a crazy degree that it's like, I thought, okay, this concept sounds so ludicrous, ridiculous, but who cares? I'm going to try it. That little push of being your own cheerleader in the morning of like, you got this girl, you go girl, and giving yourself your own high five has literally like been such a game changer for me. Such a game changer. And I know some of you might be laughing out there and be like, this is hilarious. But I kid you not, it's those, it's those micro moments with ourselves, exactly what you're talking about. Who's telling you that story? Yeah. You are. Who's, 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 I've been there. I've been there for so many years of my life as a perfectionist, as a people pleaser, as someone who was not confident, who was afraid to show my authentic self. I've had those conversations. I got sick and tired of that voice in my head. So now you know what I say to that voice? I'm like, we ain't going there today. No, you don't exist anymore. The new me loves me, cares about me, is my own best friend, my own cheerleader. You have to start talking to yourself in a way that you would talk to the person you love the most. Are you okay, Mandy, if the tradespeople use a regular square shape post a note and fist pump it? Or does it have to be a high five? I mean, like... It's fist pump. <laughs> it's a fist pump. Y'all, do whatever works for you. Okay. But I mean, okay. just that no, physical I'm, contact right. of just a fist pump and then it's a regular square. Whatever, what, how... I don't think there's going to be an uptick like on this. Amazon with tradespeople I will, ordering I will heart-shaped post-it notes, right? <laughs> I mean, if there is, I I mean, I'm, I like some commission. I would <laughs> love, I would love to see that, but I just don't see them, you know, at the no, cart. No, you know what? What Part of that is the sticky note thing, right? Like, yes, it's, it's constant there. Reminders. It's yes. a reminder to love yourself. I know that sounds hilarious, but we're, like you said, society, people outside of us, are, we're so used to hearing diminishing stories about ourselves. Please give yourself some love. Give yourself some acknowledgement, some validation. At the end of the day, and I've been in those, in those moments too, the type of career I'm in, it's very public. It's very much like very opinionated, we'll say. Yes. External yes. external opinions, right? I can tell you, I've been in states in my life where I've heard actually every nice thing said about me, but I internally was not in a good space. Those external validations, as nice as those might have seemed, appreciated, they didn't change how I felt about me. It wasn't until I finally said, hey, I need to get to a place where I'm okay with me that my whole world started changing, 
that's why I say like even making these changes for 2023, something as simple, but not really as your time, your time is your most valuable asset. If no one said that to you, you know, most people out there might not be aware, but like you can never get your time back. Where are you investing that priceless time of yours? Are you investing it in yourself? Are you investing it in like things that are honestly not serving you? Like you have to do an inventory of your daily habits. One, to see if they're actually like on a path towards where you wanna go. You have to know what direction you're going in. That's another big one. Where do you wanna go? What do you want? Answer that question for once and for all. For yourself, not for other people. I think a lot of times and like, I'm just going to be, you know, from my experience, especially with tradespeople, I know a lot of people in my own either personal life or professional life that it's not just trades, it's a lot of different industries who seem to have followed a family footstep kind of thing. And that's the only story they've ever known is like, I have to do this. Have you ever bothered to ask yourself what you actually want? Want to do. Have you really? So make 2023 be that year that you start focusing on what you want to do. Yes, explore what your passions are. I'm not saying that you can or will leave what you're doing. Maybe that is your passion. But have you ever bothered to ask yourself if that actually is your passion? Or that's just a story that you've told yourself because it was passed on to you and that's all you've ever known. Start to have an exploration. Start to be your own detective. That's what I tend to to tell people, whether it's social media or otherwise, you have to start having inner conversations to get to a point where you start having these answers come to you. If you're not willing to talk to yourself, there's not going to be more than likely people outside of you who are going, are, are you really happy? Are you really doing what you want? You're setting the precedent. And that's why I say when we talked earlier in our conversation about like, how do you, how do you deal with you know, um, external, external people who maybe are not on board with you. Honest to God, it's because you're not on board with yourself changing yet. When you radically decide you want to change something, I can't explain what it is. Something like almost energetically shifts that starts to weed out those people that aren't meant for that new journey you're on anymore. Somehow, some way, they'll either hop on that bandwagon with you. If they truly, genuinely want you to be happy and care about you, they will change eventually. They will. They will. Is there anything else that you want? Because we want to get close to wrapping it up. I still want to do, I would like to do the 12 questions with you for this first show. Yes, absolutely. And then let everybody know about what we're going to be talking about on the other shows, but also what you mentioned when we were talking way before, uh, exercises that you want to leave everybody with. A single exercise in every single show. We'll leave that fun till the end. Very end, yeah. the, 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 The... Self-development task. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, another few things I just uh, wrote down. It kind of goes along with um, just being aware of every area of your life, right? Like there's the time component. There's, again, doing an inventory of the beliefs you're talking to yourself. Like that's why I say like as much as these little exercises might sound so simple, but if you do them day in and day out, your life, and I always say this, your life is a a compilation basically of your most dominant thoughts about yourself and about everything around you. So the moment you shift those thoughts about yourself, you're going to start to see that shift externally. It's a very, and I know you can say yes, because you've seen it yourself until you experience that radical kind of shift. You keep thinking the same way. You're going to keep seeing the same. It's a very direct correlation, which is why I'm so adamant about having positive self-talk, loving self-talk in our conversations. Um, And a few other things I wrote down, um, allowing yourself to fully feel. I know we talk a lot about like emotions. We talk about expressing, expressing, which we'll get into in another episode, but you have to be able to fully express yourself. And you know, you talked about people feeling like they have to be this rock, but you're human. Like give yourself permission to feel because if you're dealing with internal things, you really honestly have to feel it to heal it. It's like that, you know, the, the metaphor, you have to clean the closet out and it's going to get messy first. Yeah, it will. But eventually you're going to end up with that organized closet. It's going to be a lot better off because you're going to be able to, to, to navigate and sift through and flow through things a lot easier. That was one, um, higher self-worth. We kind of went over already and we'll dive into that in another episode, but 
I mean, knowing your own worth, like that's a huge thing. Yeah. You have to know you're worthy of better. You have to decide that for yourself. Um, and that will also set a precedent for the relationships in your life. And the last thing I said, prioritizing alone time. If you're constantly go, 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 go outside of yourself and you're not making any time for yourself, it's going to be extremely hard to tune in and ask yourself the kind of questions we're talking about. You have to, even if it's five minutes, five minutes in the 24 hours that you have in a day yep. to just check in with you, I I swear those five minutes just to yourself will end up creating more time in your schedule because the more in tune you get with yourself, the more aligned the things around you in your world are going to become and it will generate more time that you actually are missing out on right now. I love it, Mandy. All right, so uh, everybody, uh, Mandy Ross, www.mandyjross.com, Mandy at mandyjross.com, and all over social media under Mandy, Mandy J. Ross. Uh, what's the self-exercise that you want to share for people on this one before I do the 12 questions with you? So I'm actually going to do this, and I do this on New Year's Eve. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be done that day, but I think there's a certain sort of energy. Obviously, it, New Year's Eve is a time we're all celebrating, so you could do it a few days prior to whatever. End of the year is the, the prime time for this. So this is a, a letter writing exercise, and I think this can also help to sort of shape how you, um, like if you have it, this could be maybe in place of setting goals because what the exercise ends up being is you write a letter to yourself. So you start it with, dear, you know, your name. So I'll just use myself. So dear Mandy, and I started writing this actually the other day. I was like, dear Mandy, I, as I'm reading this, I'm sitting in such and such location. I'm sitting beside maybe whoever I want to be sitting beside around whatever. And I'm feeling so happy and grateful that I accomplished all of my like heart's desires in 2023. So you're writing a letter to yourself of December 31st of next year that you will then read on that December 31st of next year. So you're gonna write the letter out. You're gonna include in that letter all the, let's say the biggest things. I mean, I could write like a novel about it, but say all the biggest things in each area of your life, say the significant areas of your life that you wanna accomplish for next year. You're gonna sign it to yourself. You're gonna put it in an envelope put it away. You might even forget about it. This is the power of manifesting, which I love. A lot of times, like whether it's a vision board or these letters or whatnot, you're going to write it out. And I kid you not, I would be shocked to know next year on the 31st, if any of those things actually did come true, because I've done this where I've done similar exercises around the end of the year, the following year, just the simple act of writing these things out and like planting that little seed in your subconscious, setting the intention out there of, I want to do these things. Looking back a year later, they actually come true. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I've sat there and done like a no. whole strategy. No, it's literally just the act of, again, making time for yourself, thinking genuinely about what do you want for the next year in every area, having legitimate goals that you want to accomplish, writing it out, putting it in, sealing it up, putting it away, there's something about that kind of exercise that like plants those seeds where you kind of, not kind of, you subconsciously start looking at ways in order to accomplish those. And somehow, some way, this stuff ends up happening. Like I've had like crazy circumstances. Oh, I know it does. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. It so I hope I, I'm inviting you. I hope you all do the letter. I would be so grateful if any of the viewers do this this year and next year's things start to shift and, and happen Right in, Reach like in share, out, yeah, and on social or and let them know. I would love to hear some success That's stories. Amazing. All right, so before I do the twelve, I just want to let everybody know that we uh, we're going to be doing five other shows. We're going to focus heavily on relationships. Yeah. Next, we're going to talk about all kinds of relationships, just not your significant other, family, uh, business, friends, everything. Right. Yeah. We're going to do a show on mental health. Yeah. Uh, we're going to tackle that. We're going to do a show on emotional health. Uh, we're going to do a show on spiritual, um, and we're going to uh, final. Uh, the last one's going to be all about your purpose in life which is going to be really, really interesting. So are you ready for the 12 questions? Let's go. What is your favorite construction word? Ooh. Top of my, I don't know, I can't, design. What is your least favorite construction word? Dirtiness. <laughs> what turns you on in construction? 
Impeccable craftsmanship. What turns you off in construction? Laziness. What's your favorite curse word? Uh, I don't think you curse. Do you curse? No. You don't curse. Don't worry. There's always a pass on. What is your favorite vehicle in the entire world? Oh, my goodness. Hmm. I'm going to be honest. I'm like, I'm the worst person when it comes to names of vehicles. <laughs> I love, and the, no, but this is the thing. I love, love beautiful, like, sports cars. I love them. I love them so much. I don't even care about the name. I just see it, and, like, visually, I'm a very visual person. I'm like, oh, that's absolutely so I don't know. I don't Nothing know. Nothing comes to mind? Not like, not a name. No. Okay. What would be your least favorite? Oh, this is like, this is like, uh, I guess something that's ugly to my like visual appeal. <laughs> that's so like, uh. What construction sound or noise do you love? Construction sound that I love? I guess this is, th this is gonna get sentimental. I've had people build things for me in the past, so I guess like, I guess like sort of surprise, like you know, just a surprise. Like I know it's not technically a sound, but if somebody was like surprised, like I built this for you, mm -hmm. like that would be like the best sound in the world to me. What construction sound or noise do you hate? Anything that disrupts my peace. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt one day? Ah. Uh. I'm doing everything I love. Like, I feel like I wear so many hats. Um, I have said this, like my dad is a psychotherapist and if I hadn't gone to school for journalism, I think when I was younger, actually, I wanted to go to school to become a lawyer originally, but there's two things that come to mind. From a creative aspect, I would have definitely gone into something more artsy, but from a psychological standpoint, perspective i probably would have followed in my dad's footsteps and done something like in psychotherapy or psychology what profession would you not like to do i think for my for me personally i would hate any profession that has to do with probably delivering bad news like yeah i mean there's probably there's a couple but anything that like honestly like having I give kudos to people who have to fire or like have to do things that like hurt people, even if it like, you know, it's not intentional. I honestly, I think I, it would be too heartbreaking or, or anything to do with like death. I just, I'm such a sentimental person. Anyone who has to deal with that out there, like I have the utmost respect because that, that would just tug at my heartstrings way too much. Last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Mm, I love this question. I would love to hear him say that he's so happy and proud of me for living, you know, becoming my highest version of myself in this lifetime and using all the gifts that he gave me in order to make the world a better place. Nice. Mandy, thank you very much. Going to wrap this one up. <laughs> it's www.mandyjross.com, Mandy at mandyjross.com, and all over social media, Mandy J. Ross. Yeah, I just like to end like anything that I'm on or anything I would say, like, I'm wishing y'all a blessed and beautiful day out there. I think that's it, Angelia. Thank you. We're out of here for now.